Hello and welcome to Tony Broom Ministries. Recently I had the opportunity to preach to the congregation of Crossroads Pentecostal Holiness Church in Henderson, North Carolina. We talked about the year and the day from Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1, 2, and 3. Now let's join the message entitled, The Year and the Day. Well, I want to talk to you about the year and the day. And this comes from Isaiah 61, the first three verses. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. That's where our subject comes from. The acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To declare, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified, the year and the day. The action of God in our response to the gospel of Jesus determines our position as to the acceptable year of the Lord or the day of vengeance of our God. God has done what He could. He acted. He put Himself out there on the sports field. We say it like this. He left it all on the field. He not only left it all on the field, He left it all on the hill. He left it all on Calvary's hill. He went there for us. He came to this world of sin and shame, and He left it all on the field. He put it all out there. He died on the cruel, rugged cross. He shed His blood. And before they took him to the cross, they took him to the whipping post. They beat him unmercifully. And there he took upon him the stripes and wounds in his back. He took upon him the stripes by which we are healed. Yes. That healing does not come when we want it all the time. Amen. That healing does not come how we want it all the time. But whether it comes like we want it or how we want it, whether we can see results of it like we think, the fact is, the Word of God says that we're healed, and we're healed not because of symptoms going away that we might see. We're healed because He said we're healed. That's right. That's right. Jesus was given the book of Isaiah. He stood in the synagogue, and they gave Him the book of Isaiah to read. Can you imagine giving the Son of God a copy of the book of Isaiah? Wow! Oh, man! He stood up to read, and they gave Him the book of Isaiah. Yes. Not just a coincidence, but it happened by divine providence. Yes. And he found that place where it was written, and we read just what we read. But when Jesus quoted this scripture in the synagogue from Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, he stopped at the acceptable year of the Lord. Do you notice when you read it from Luke's account in chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, you don't read about beauty for ashes. You don't read about comforting all that mourn. You don't read about the day of vengeance of our God. You read about Him coming with the Spirit upon Him and being anointed of God. And you read about Him setting the captives free. And you read about Him opening the doors of the prison and recovering of sight to the blind. You read about Him loosing those who are bruised and oppressed. And you read about Him preaching the acceptable year of the Lord, but that's where He stops. Why did he stop there? It's because the rest of the prophecy is to be fulfilled during and after the tribulation period. Yes. He came to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, not the day of vengeance of our God. We today as preachers and teachers, we must be careful to preach all the counsel of God. Amen. Not just the lovey-dovey part, right. but not just the judgment and wrath part either. We have to preach the full gospel. The full gospel says you believe on Jesus and you'll be saved. But it also says you'll be sanctified. You can be baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. We have to preach the full gospel. And if you preach anything other than the full gospel, then that's 
why people are half-hearted because you don't have a full gospel. That's right. Amen. If you preach a full gospel, you can have full joy in your full heart. That's right. If you preach what Jesus preached, the acceptable year of the Lord, then you can see people saved and born again and sanctified. Not everybody will get saved. And I say that not everybody will get saved. That's because that's been our experience in life. But the fact is that anybody can get saved. Amen. That's, right. that's why Jesus came. He didn't come for just no partial atonement. He didn't come for just partial somebody can get in and somebody can't. And those are some were predestined to be saved and some are predestined to be lost. No, all of us by Satan were predestined to be lost. But the fact is that Christ came and now we're all of us who are born again are predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. That's the only real predestination there is anyway. You have to be saved to be predestinated. To get in on that predestination, you've got to be born again. And when you're born again, Jesus lives in your heart, and when He does, He wants to conform you to His image. And when we gossip about people, when we talk about people, when we eat the preacher for dinner, when we do all these things that are not right. By the way, if you go to Bojangles, you go to Smithfield, or you go to that other place that sells chicken so good in the KFC, and what's that place that's got them livers and gizzards? And the old and skillet. Somebody, I know y'all going to know that. <laughs> Woo! Man, when you go there and you get that good chicken, that tastes a whole lot better than having a preacher for dinner. <laughs> Do you more good, too. And you think that chicken's going to hurt your belly. It might, but it'll, it won't hurt your belly half as bad when you're talking about the preacher. You're talking about somebody else. And you know what else? When you do that, you're not fulfilling the Great Commission. There's no way in the world we can be fulfilling the Great Commission when we're doing the Great Omission. We're taking part in things that are tearing down. Jesus said, if you are for me or you're against me, you either gather with me or you scatter abroad. He talked about this in Isaiah Scripture and he stopped at the acceptable year of the Lord. When it says year, it's not talking about necessarily a, a year like that. It uses the word year. Shana is the word year for Hebrew. and It uses the word day, yom is day. But it's not talking about that particular thing. It uses that as a figure. It's talking about this acceptable time. Thank God it's longer than a year. Because it took many of us many years to get right with God. And he kept on dealing with us. Thank God He kept on dealing with us. But let's look at some of these action verbs in Isaiah's prophecy. Spirit and the definite article is not included in Hebrew. It's understood to be there. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Jesus ministered with the Spirit upon Him. He didn't have an organ. He didn't have a Hammond organ. He didn't have a Wurlitzer. He didn't have all these things. He didn't have the digital piano. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, hit that note right there. I, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hit, hit, yeah, right there. Right there it is. <laughs> no, he didn't have any of that. He didn't say, I wait till I feel the Holy Ghost. Some people are waiting till they feel something and they still wait him because they haven't felt anything. That's right. <laughs> He said, the Spirit is upon me, not because I feel anything. Amen. I feel something because the Spirit is upon me, but the Spirit's not upon me because I feel something. We got the cart before the horse when we put feeling before healing. I don't feel healed, so I'm not healed. No, I'm healed, and then feeling comes later. She touched the hem of his garment, and then she felt in her body that she was healed. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, not because I feel anything, but it just is. It's because the Lord has anointed me. That word anointed. We pray for the anointing to come. And I suppose that's not wrong, but really it is because we don't have to pray for the anointing to come. The anointing is always with us. God doesn't stay in this building. I know God's everywhere in that sense, but God doesn't just stay in this building. Once we leave, there's no reason for Him to just be habitating around in here. There's no Ark of the Covenant. There's no 
cherubim stretching forth their wings and Him having that glory. The glory is in us. The glory is in Jesus Christ. And He shares that glory and gives that glory to us. God said, My glory I will not give to another, but we can have it through Jesus Christ. He has anointed. We have that anointing. It's not something that you have to conjure up. It's not something that you have to pray down. The anointing is with you all the time. Whether you feel anything or not. It's a good thing to do when you go into a room sometimes. It may be a room at your house. It may be a room wherever it is. You go there and you stand there for a little while. And you'll just say, you may not say it out loud, but in your mind, in your heart, you just say, Lord, I thank you that your presence is with me here. I thank you that you're with me in this place. I thank you that your anointing is present. And you'll be surprised, and we shouldn't be surprised, but we'll be amazed at what happens when we just begin to acknowledge the presence of God. The power is present at your house. In England, they say the mains. The mains are the mains are already there. <laughs> All you've got to do is just plug up to the mains. <laughs> well, the power's already there. You don't have to call Duke. You don't have to call the energy company every day and say, Would you send some energy my way? <laughs> All they say is, if you just keep on paying your bill, Hoss, we're gonna have power in your house. <laughs> As long as you pay your bill, you're going to have power at your house. And all you got to do is just plug in that power. The anointing is there. The anointing is with me to bear good tidings. And that word is basar. Bear good tidings. To preach the gospel. To bear good tidings. Good news. God, give us some good news. We turn on our TV every morning. And don't you expect to hear no good news on that thing. I don't know why in the world we keep on paying for cable and keep on paying for satellite and keep on paying for sling and all that. I know some of you might not know what sling and, and, and uh, station view, PlayStation view and all this streaming devices and things that they use now. They get the same television programs not having to go through cable or satellite. Some of you say, hmm, that sounds interesting. I'm going to talk to you maybe about that later. <laughs> But we keep on paying these prices and there's no good news on there. Sometimes you'll hear a good Christmas story. You'll hear a good news of things. Somebody did something fine for their neighbor. That's wonderful. But at large, it's all the news they have. They don't come up with this thing now called fake news. Well, when we were coming up, no fake news. It was all lies. Either truth or a lie. There ain't no such thing as fake news. The people's on there is fake. That's the fake part of it. And what they're supposed to be reporting is the news part of it. But he's talking about basar. He's talking about good news. To bear good news. I come bringing good news. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. He comes bringing us good news. And if you want to hear good news, and everybody wants to hear good news, if you don't want to hear good news, you need your noodle examined. <laughs> But everybody wants to hear good news. And if you want to hear good news, there's good news in Jesus Christ. Amen. To bear good news to the meek. The word pronounced anabim means afflicted, humble, meek, or poor. Some people's problem is they're having it too good in life. And thank God, anybody that can have it good in life, praise the Lord for that. But some people have it so good, they don't need God. They don't think they need God. They have the woman, I got my woman and my money, and they got money, they got their dog, they got their Chevrolet, they got their Ford, they got their Honda Honda, Ronda Ronda. I mean, they got it all. They think they don't need anything. They're having it good. But you need God. You can have it good in this life without God in the natural, but you can't get out of this life alive without God in the spiritual. But there are people... Even people with money, they don't realize how afflicted and humble they are. But you have to be in that position if you're afflicted. If you're having a hardship, that's what affliction is. By the way, it's not talking about sickness or disease. We talk about afflicted. That's not afflicted. Because Jesus doesn't come to take all of our afflictions away. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but He delivers them all. He delivers us out of all of them. He will deliver you out of them. 
But He won't just automatically take them all away. Some people come to the altar and they want to just pray all your troubles and trials away. We cannot pray your troubles and trials away. If I could pray yours away, I'd pray mine away. We cannot pray your troubles and trials away because through them you can become stronger. And He comes to bring the gospel to those who are humble, to those who are meek, to those who are poor. Not just talking about money, but those who are poor. You're destitute. You need God. When we come to that place, we realize it. And Jesus even said, Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. He has sent me. He sent Him to the world. Yes, He was willing to come. Yes, He came to do the Father's will. But God sent His Son. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He sent Him. That who would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus tells us, as my Father has sent me, so send I you. Some preachers preach it like the Father and the Son had a conversation in heaven. Well, Son, do you want to go? Yeah, Daddy, I'll go. No, there was no conversation like that. God said, I'm sending you. Jesus said, I'm going. That's what kind of relationship they have. And that's the kind of relationship that God expects us to have with Him. God said, I'm sending you. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, Lord. That's not what we ought to be. If God says, I'm sending you, we ought to be willing to go. Why? Because Jesus hung on that cross over six hours for every one of us. In pain and agony and torture, He hung on that cross for us. And we're not willing to give of ourselves to Him. Just because if somebody might say something, somebody might hurt your feelings, somebody might make you mad. What did they do to Jesus? They made Him mad. They hurt His feelings. They did all those things. But He never lost sight of the fact that God had sent Him. And He came, He said, to do my Father's will. He has sent me to bind up. Habash is the word. To bind up the broken of heart. Broken hearted. Not just heal your achy, breaky heart. Jesus came to bind up your heart. You don't have to sit with a beer in your tear, dear. Some sad country song. There was no sin in the world. Surely it wouldn't be any country music. Because you wouldn't have no hanking and drinking and stinking to sing about. Choking and joking and smoking. You wouldn't have me singing all that. Somebody done somebody wrong song. Oh, man. No, He sent me to heal that broken heart. Jesus will heal your broken heart to proclaim liberty to the captives and proclaim kara. It's the same word that He called darkness out of light. The light he, kara, he called day and the darkness He kara called night. The same word, kara. It means to call. It means to call out, to proclaim. Sometimes you can call just by, I call her Sally or I call him Adam. But sometimes you have to call. You have to cry out. And he said to proclaim liberty to the captives. You don't have to stay captive. You don't have to be captive. He will liberate you. He will cause you to be liberated. And liberation is not going around the country showing your fanny. That's not liberation. Liberation is being free, not to sin, free from sin. If you're wild and going, acting the fool and doing all these things, you're not free. You think you're free. You think you're having a good time. We did. We thought we was having a good time. No, that's not a good time. That's an early grave to the gates of hell. That's what it is. But Jesus came to set the captive free and the opening of the eyes to the prisoners, to them that are bound. And Luke's account has it like this, recovering of sight to the blind. Isaiah uses the word which is pronounced asurim. It means imprisoned. There are those who are imprisoned today. Some are incarcerated, but those who are imprisoned, they're bound by drugs, they're bound by alcohol. Now I want to say this because it's so prevalent in our county today. When you think you can mix something like an elephant tranquilizer and a heroin or something together, it'll kill a mule, much less a man. What in the world are we thinking about? 
And our young people and people that are not so young are dropping off like flies. You think the thief does not come to kill, steal, and to destroy? But Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Praise Sharam al Praise God. He came to give us life. He came to set the captive free. And no matter how bad it gets, and no matter how time goes on, we still have to believe God's Word, that He still has the power to set the captive free. He still has power to do great things. He still has power to save. He still has power to break the chains of bondage. He still has power to break the addiction. Go oh, hallelujah. To proclaim, kara, the same word, the acceptable year of the Lord. He's proclaiming the year of the Lord. He's saying the time of the door of grace is open. I am the Messiah. I'm here to give life. I'm God's fulfillment of promise. When the time was just right, Galatians 4 said, He sent forth His Son into the world, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. And that was every one of us. Because we fought the law and the uh, law won. <laughs> you tried to fight it. You tried to beat it, but you couldn't. There's some pretty smart folks now. They can beat the system. You know why they can beat the system? Because the system's crooked like they are. That's why they can beat it. The time we were coming up, the law was more straight than it is now, and you couldn't beat it. You were bound by the law, the law of the land, the law of the Bible too. You were bound by the law. He said, I came to proclaim this acceptable year of the Lord. You can be set free from that law of legislation and legalism. You can be set free. You can be saved. You can be born again. And I also came to proclaim the day of vengeance of our God. For those who do not get right with God, the acceptable year of the Lord, and God has left it open a long time. Jesus came well over 2,000 years ago now. And He did what He did and the door of grace is still open. We don't know how long it's going to be open. I don't see how long He can stand it much longer. But He loves them just like He loves me. And He wants to give them a chance to be saved just like He did me. And so the year, the acceptable year of the Lord is still there. But there's coming for those who refuse to get right with God, those who refuse to hear the gospel of Christ, there's coming a day of vengeance of our God. Thank God a day is shorter than a year. Because if the day of vengeance of our God had lasted longer, at least half as long as the year, the acceptable year of the Lord has lasted, we'd all be consumed. There's a day of wrath coming. He came to comfort. Naham is the word. To comfort all that mourn. There are times, brothers and sisters, when you and I as believers need to mourn. We need to mourn for the lost, and we need to mourn for those who are sick, and we need to mourn for those who are out there bound in chains of sin and addiction. But God doesn't want you mourning all the time. Because just the fact of you mourning doesn't heal anybody. Just the fact of you mourning doesn't save anybody. Jesus didn't say... Mourn and thou shalt be saved. Mourn and your grandchildren will be saved. He says, every individual, you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for yourself and be saved. He wants to comfort you that mourn. Those who are mourned to a point, and it, the word is pronounced sayam, to a point unto them that mourn in Zion. Those who are having heavy hearts, they love Jesus, they love God, they're serving God, but they have heavy hearts. They're concerned about what's going on in our country. They're concerned about people that are against things that are right. They know it's right. They know that it's the best for the country, but they're just against it just to be against it because they don't want to be said to be part of a certain party. It doesn't matter what party you're part of. If something is good, if something is right, stand up and be for what's good and right. Amen. Hallelujah. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty. Beauty. The word is pa'er. It's an ornamental headdress, a turban. That's the only reason that guys can wear a headband. He wants to give you a good headband. Beautiful headband. For, in place of, instead of, the word is tahat. It's a word that's like it's used for down, it's used for under, it's used also for instead of. Beauty for ashes. Ashes. I don't sing this kind of music, don't listen to it. 
But there's nothing cold as ashes after the fire is gone. Now, don't that make you just want to shout and praise God? Amen. No, it doesn't. Like, shout and praise God. <laughs> oh, you light a fire and let the ashes come afterwards. It's cold and dead and barren. He said, I want to give you a beautiful headband in place of that. Take away those ashes, those ashen memories that you have. He doesn't want you to just live in ashes. He doesn't want you to just live in ministries. We used to have a good ministry. We used to have a good church. We used to have a good this. No, He wants you to have fire. He wants you to be blazing hot for Jesus now. Because now faith is. Now the gospel is. Now Jesus is. Jesus is not just was. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He's the God who was, is, and always will be. Amen. The all of joy in place of or instead of mourning. Quit all that mourning. Nobody wants to get saved if we go around pouting and doubting. We ought to be singing and shouting, lifting up Jesus. If we're sour, if we're Scrooges, we're talking about being Scrooge at Christmas time. Somebody Scrooge, people are at every time. Yeah. Christmas, Easter, July, nothing is every right. If the church is too small, they grumpy about that. If it's too big, they grumpy about that. If they got too many things going on, they're mad about that. If they ain't got nothing going on, they're mad about that. I thought when Jesus came into your heart, you were satisfied. He came to satisfy your soul. If He satisfy your soul, He'll help your body to be satisfied every once in a while too. Right. Steak ain't never done. Either too done or not done enough. Chicken's either too cooked or not cooked enough. Right. Everything, nothing is right. But Jesus comes to make it right. Yes. He comes to give you the oil of joy yes. in place of mourning. The mantle, and the word is ma'ate. It's a different word that's used like garment. I know it says garment of praise, but he's talking about more than just a garment like a coat. He's talking about that mantle. He wants to give you Elijah's mantle. He wants to put a mantle on you. A mantle of praise and take off that spirit of heaviness. A mantle of praise of a song of praise. And the word is tahilah. It's a praise song. He wants to put a praise song on your lips. You may not can carry a tune in a bucket, but He wants to put a praise on your lips. If you're right with God, you have Jesus in your heart. There's no way that Jesus can live in your heart and a song not be there at the same time. He puts a song in your heart. Song of praise instead of that spirit of heaviness. Take off that mourning. Take off that spirit of heaviness and put on that mantle of praise. They might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. All of this is done to glorify God. Why did Jesus come? We say it's for us, and certainly it is. But He came to glorify God. He healed, and everything He did, yes, it was for us, but He did it to glorify God. And so you and I would say, I do this for Jesus. I do it for Jesus. I reach out for Jesus. I give for Jesus. I preach for Jesus. I sing for Jesus. I heal for Jesus. I do whatever I do for Jesus. I'm kind to my neighbor for Jesus. And that's good. We should do it for Jesus. But there's a big purpose that is even more shattering to just say that we do it for Jesus. And that is that God might be glorified. Yes. Amen. That's why He did what He did. He did it to glorify God. And that's why we should do what we do is to glorify God. Amen. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He came the first time to save, not to judge. And because He is coming again, we are to proclaim both the acceptable year of the Lord and also the day of vengeance of our God. Be saved today, for judgment is coming tomorrow. We are to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. We are to tell people, yes, Jesus wants to save you. He loves you. He died for your sins. He wants you to be saved. He's got a good life for you. He wants you to be sanctified. He wants you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to be blessed. 
And that's part of what we preach and teach. But we also got to preach and teach. Look, there's judgment coming. You see the things that are happening in this world? You see how Washington is doing? You see how North Korea is doing? You see how the nations of the world are doing? You see how people's hearts are coming undone? You see how people are acting? You see what they're doing? You see uh, the ungodly things that people are coming up with that you wouldn't even ever think about when you was coming up. If people will shoot you for no reason, they'll kill you for no reason. And all these things that are going on, you see how people are... Uh, OD and every day on drugs and alcohol and they can't even face reality. Do you know why these things are happening? Because there's a day, there's a day of vengeance of God coming on this world. Those who do not receive Christ will be judged and the wrath of God will fall upon them and they'll run to the caves and the mountains and they'll say, fall on us and hide us from the face of Him who sits on the throne. We're to preach it all, brothers and sisters. The church to be afraid of the book of the Revelation is the most disappointing thing in the world you could think of. We need to preach the book of the Revelation. Quit arguing about it and start preaching it and teaching it. Let people know there's judgment. There's grace now that's available. But if you don't get right with God, judgment's coming. And it doesn't matter what your family name is. It doesn't matter how much money they got. It doesn't matter about all that. When judgment comes, it's going to come to all. Doesn't matter what your last name is. Doesn't matter if your granddaddy built a church. Doesn't matter if your uncle was a preacher. The thing that matters is the acceptable year or the day of vengeance of God. Our response to the gospel determines on which position we stand. The year and the day. You have been listening to a sermon from God's Anointed Word given to the congregation of Crossroads Pentecostal Holiness Church in Henderson, North Carolina. The title has been The Year and the Day. Make Jesus Christ your Lord. You can be part of the acceptable year instead of the day of God's wrath. Join us next time for the next sermon and teaching session from God's Holy Word produced by Tony Broom Ministries.